Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation with absolute value. We have z cubed equals i times the absolute value of z and we're going to be solving for z values. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method I'm going to set z equal to a plus bi. What else could I pick right? And then that Im Im implies a plus bi to the third equals i times the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is the absolute value. Okay, let's go ahead and expand it. And then we're going to go ahead and put the real and imaginary parts together. But first, this is going to be 3ib squared i squared. This is going to be b cubed i cubed. And as you know, i squared is negative 1 and i cubed is negative i. Hopefully you know that. a cubed plus 3a squared bi. And then here I'm going to get negative 3ab squared minus b cubed i equals this. Now let's go ahead and put the real parts together. a cubed and 3ab squared, 3a squared b and b cubed, and then it's equal to this. Awesome. Now look at the real part here. There's a real part here. There's no real part. It's zero. And the imaginary part is square root of a squared plus b squared. So we have to solve a system that kind of looks complicated, but thanks to the first equation, it's going to be easier. So let's start with this and pu uh, put all the cases together. Take out A, and we have two cases, sort of. Either A is 0 or A squared is 3B squared. If you want, you can kind of split it, this up into two cases, like with the plus minus sign, but I don't think that's going to be necessary, okay? Case number one, case number two. Start with one. We have another equation, right? So if a is equal to zero, start with that, and then use the second equation, which is 3a squared b minus, minus b cubed equals this. Now, if a is 0, we're getting negative b cubed equals square root of b squared, which is the absolute value of b. b is real, remember that. So, depending on b, we're going to get two values. If b is positive, I don't think I need to write if because we're kind of considering all these cases. Suppose b is positive, then we have negative b cubed equals b or b cubed plus b equals 0, and then b times b squared plus 1 equals 0. I get b equals 0. I could also say b is greater or equal to 0 here, so b equals 0 would be acceptable for a equals 0. So 0, 0 is a solution, which means z equals 0 is a solution. Make sense? Okay, hold on to that. Now we're going to look at the second case. a squared equals 3b squared. What does that entail? We're going to have to couple it with the other equation. And now let's go ahead and do this. Since we have a squared equals 3b squared, let's go ahead and replace that. So we're going to get 9b cubed minus b cubed equals square root of 3b squared plus b squared 4b squared. This is 8b cubed and this is absolute value of 2b or not 2b, right? Okay, now. If b is positive, again, we have two cases, 8b cubed is equal to 2b, 8b cubed minus 2b is equal to 0, or 2b times 4b squared minus 1 is equal to 0. This implies b is 0, b is plus minus 1 half. I can only take b equals 1 half, so maybe write them separately. b equals 1 half, b equals negative 1 half. Obviously, we can't take this, and we can't take this. We already considered b equals 0, so we're good. b equals 1 half. For which? For this equation. 
So if b is equal to 1 half, a squared is 3 fourths, because 3b squared. From here, a is root 3 over 2, or negative root 3 over 2. Awesome. That's going to give us the following solutions. Root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i, negative root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i. Does that look familiar? <laughs> Hopefully. And 0, of course, so far. Now let's see if we can find more solutions, right? Should there be more? What do you think? Well, we didn't consider all the cases because we still have to look at b is less than 0. So if b is less than 0, right, then I'm going to get 8b cubed is equal to negative 2b, and then 8b cubed plus 2b is equal to 0. Let's see. And 2b times 4b squared plus 1. We don't get real solutions, I and mean, b equals 0 was already considered. So we don't really get anything new from here, right? So for this one, we considered b is greater or equal to 0, but I don't think we looked at b is less than 0 case. Looks like it, right? So if b is negative, I'm talking about the first case. If b is negative in this case, we get negative b cubed equals negative b, or b cubed minus b equals 0, or b times b squared minus 1 equals 0. From here, we get three solutions. b is 0, b is 1, b is negative 1. But this needs to be satisfied by b is less than 0. So these are not acceptable. b equals negative 1 is the only possibility for a equals 0. So a equals 0, b equals negative 1 is another solution. And that would give us, guess what? That would give us negative i. So far, we got four solutions. Yay. Are there any other solutions? I don't think so. But let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because you never know what you're going to see, right? Second method is going to be cooler, much cooler. And we've done similar problems before. Hopefully, you'll remember if you absolute value both sides, take the absolute value here and take the absolute value. Because what happens is if z1 is equal to z2, then their absolute values are also equal, right? Their va absolute values are actually absolutely equal. So this becomes the absolute value of z cubed. This becomes the absolute value of i times the absolute value of z. You can absolute value z many times. It's still going to be the absolute value of z. And now this is 1. So we get absolute value of z cubed minus absolute value of z is equal to 0. Absolute value of z factor out. Absolute value of z squared minus 1 equals 0. From here, you get three solutions. Again, absolute value of z is 0. Absolute value of z is 1. Absolute value of z is negative 1. But wait a minute, absolute value cannot be negative even with complex numbers. Absolute value of 0 implies z is 0, and this just implies what? Absolute value of z equals 1. Consider the original equation. This just means z cubed is i. Ooh, wow. We're looking at cube roots of i, right? And what are they? z equals negative i, right? z equals root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i and z equals negative root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i. Again, the same solutions along with z zero, z equals 0. We get four solutions. But how did I know that these are the cube roots of i? Well, you can go ahead and actually write the i as e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And then divide both sides by 3. z is going to become e to the power i times pi over 6 plus 2 pi n over 3, replace n with 0, 1, and 2, you're going to get the same solutions. Let's see if Wolfram Alpha can figure this out. And yay, good job again. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.